Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Um, instead of talking about one of my Senate predictions tonight, I want to talk about a Senate race, uh, one Senate race in particular, that has really popped on the radar this year that I really didn't think uh, was going to pop on the radar. Um, and that is the state of South Carolina, the Palmetto State. Uh, and the senator, um, the current senator, and the incumbent, uh, Lindsey Graham. Um, if you remember, back in 2016, Lindsey Graham was a very fierce, proud, vehement, never-Trumper. And, um, was really a, a a bright light in a uh, sea of uh, disappointment uh, for most uh, Republicans, um, traditional Republicans. Graham uh, stood fervent um, in his anti-Trumpism. Uh, he said Trump's a, a racist, a xenophobe. Uh, he said uh, we'll get beat. Um, all all sorts of horrible stuff. Well, Trump gets into office, 2017, starts poking around the edge, little Trump curious, 2018, beginning of 2018, you know, we had the whole shithole country incident, Lindsay was very offended. Gets his golfing buddy back. Later in 2018, we begin our full descent into full-on Trumpism. And um, by the end of 2018, early 2019, hell, we, we, we might as well have us a, a red hat and one of those obnoxious flags flying in our yard. We're 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 fully on the, the the train. Well 2018-19 rolls along. We promote these you know, Russia and um, it wasn't Russia, it was Ukraine theories that Devin Nunes Promoted in the Intelligence Committee. Uh, we defend Trump on the, the Ukraine scandal. Tons of stuff. And in a way, you could possibly understand it. Lindsey's biggest threat, Lindsey Graham's biggest threat, was never, ever going to be, up until 2020, from a Democratic opponent in South Carolina. I mean, hell... The South Carolina Democratic Party in 2010 nominated someone no one had ever heard of for the United States Senate, Alvin Green. I mean, they 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 were they were in in a rebuilding mode. Um, but 2018, um, they ran a competitive race against. Um, Henry McMaster, and they saw that Lindsey Graham might be vulnerable. They recruited a great candidate, Jamie Harrison, former state party chair, uh, to run against Lindsey. Lindsey's bet was going on full Trumpism pays off. He gets through the Republican primary, because that was always going to be his biggest concern if he continued on his... Um, previous position of never Trump. It was he would he would have been taken down in a Republican primary uh, by the Red Hat Brigade. Well then Jamie he turned his attention to the general election. And Jamie Harrison, who had had no opponents in his primary, is waiting. And Jamie Harrison has done something very strategic. Jamie Harrison had bought up airtime on national television. In, 
particular television that progressive voters might be watching. He's brought up airtime on MSNBC, uh, specifically during Chris Hayes, Rachel Maddow, Lawrence O'Donnell. He's brought airtime on CNN, Chris Cuomo, Don Lemon. Shows that progressives are likely to watch. And much like Ted Cruz was public enemy number one for progressive voters in 2000, and 18, Lindsey Graham has become that for them in 2020. So, at the start of 2020, I, this was one race some people said, oh, keep your eye on this, it, it could be competitive, and, and, and I was not buying it. I thought, yes, it might be somewhat competitive, Per se, but this is a race that Lindsey Graham won by 15 and a half percent in 2014. I, I really don't see him being in danger. Boy, was I wrong. Uh, we are in the closing days of the campaign. Uh, they are tied up in the polls. Jamie Harrison just announced a fundraising haul uh, that. He's not going to be able to spend all the money uh, before November 3rd. Um, boy, just a, an absolute cash infusion. I still think that probably, um, and I'm not making a prediction yet, um, this is just kind of where I see the race at the moment, I still give the slight edge uh, somewhat to Lindsey Graham. Uh, but the big thing I think that Lindsey Graham's race does is it diverts money away from other races that Republicans have to spend in South Carolina that they weren't anticipating spending and they have to make choices. Do they cut Cory Gardner off? Do they cut Martha McSally off? Do they cut... Um, is Susan Collins off to save a more safe but in danger seat uh, like Lindsey Graham? If Lindsey Graham loses this race, what's going to seal his fate is what sustained Lindsey Graham for years. It's the suburban voters, it's those Chamber of Commerce, the Country Club. The core constituency of the pre-Trump Republican Party. That's what's going to be the death knell to Lindsey Graham. That's what's going to be what sends him into retirement. Because they're going to say, you made your bed with Trump and now you're going to lie in it. And you may get some Trump voters who, this is, now this is a wild thought. Who are going to go into a voting booth and they're going to cast a ballot for president for Donald Trump. I don't understand it, but, but they are. And then, down ballot. More precarious than that, they're going to cast a ballot for Jamie Harrison for Senate. Is it a large group? No, it's a relatively small, small group. But Jamie Harrison is trouncing Lindsey Graham in fundraising. Lindsey Graham is not, obviously not enjoying this. You can just tell. Um, and boy, is um, Jamie Harrison getting a lot of uh, media coverage? Uh, and the race is getting a lot of attention. I'm not re yet ready to make a prediction on it. I, I would like to see how uh, the race plays out a little bit more. Uh, but keep your tentacles up. Uh, because on election night, 
this could be one of the ones that surprises the country. In 2018, on election night, even though it was, it's always close, and even though pe we should have been preparing for it, Florida surprised everyone. It really did, both in terms of the governor's race and in the senatorial race, more so in the governor's race. So, who knows? So, we'll see you all um, tomorrow. I may cover another Senate race like this. I may make a prediction. Who knows? But I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good night, and goodbye.